Yo guys, what's up? It's Warspirit. Welcome to another Overwatch Stage 1 video. Today we're going to be looking at Reaper. Got a pretty nice gameplay here for you guys. At least I thought it was good when I was playing it. felt pretty intense. Lots of little nice frags on the Reaper here. Not so much press Q to win, like Reaper's sort of signature move, Death Blossom, where he spins around in circles and just absolutely slays everyone in close proximity to him. Not so much of that in this gameplay, but lots of little single kills in and out sort of assassin gameplay which is what Reaper is pretty good at as well. So Reaper is definitely an awesome character. I think once you get down the, the basic mechanics of the Reaper, you can always do pretty well with him. He's got that survivability from his shift ability where he goes into a wraith form. He can't take any damage, he can't take any CC. He can evade ultimates and things like that. So basically you want to sneak up behind enemies, go all in on them because you can afford to go all in on them and then wraith form up and back out and get back to your team, do a little regroup and sort of thing. So he's definitely got that survivability you need if you're playing solo queue as a lone player and just wanting to go for a little kill streak on your own, assassin style. He's great for that sort of thing. Getting used to him is probably the hardest part. Like probably playing him in the first few times you're like, he's pretty slow, he's a shotgun guy. You have to get in close range to the enemies. It might be pretty tricky to get in close range at first, but he's a pretty quiet guy. He's a, he's a little ninja sort of dude. Like I saw a video on YouTube which showed all the footstep sounds of all the heroes in the game and reapers in that video seem to be pretty loud but see when you're in game and everything's going on you you really can't hear reaper sneaking up on you much at all in general i feel like the footsteps sounds in overwatch are pretty quiet they're pretty hard to listen out for because a lot of time you're hearing your own footsteps all the time you're hearing your teammates footsteps as well it's very hard to tell footstep sounds in this game right now probably it's something you'll get used to in uh, eventually or at least i hope i can get used to eventually but for now, Reaper is definitely a threat and his footstep sounds aren't letting him down and sneaking up behind enemy teams and getting those little picks on them. His other ability, Teleport, is there as well, just for getting those flanks. I'm using it in this gameplay because there's a Bastion on the enemy team, so anytime I see the Bastion setting up, I pretty much just teleport, hopefully towards a position outside of the Bastion's line of sight so that I can just duck behind him or jump down on his head and assassinate the Bastion real easily. Reaper's pretty good against him in most situations except when he is playing super safe, setting up in those 90 degree corners where you pretty much cannot get access to. Then you want to just have your team coordinate a spam and spam the Bastion out who's sitting in the corner but otherwise Reaper's pretty good at teleporting behind characters like that, wiping them instantly out of the upcoming team fights. So I'm playing Reaper here on offense. He also works really well on defense, so definitely a sort of all-rounder character. He is labeled as an offense character, but he can definitely be played defensively as well, just because he can lock down those small rooms, lock down those corridors. Anyone running around can just take a shotgun blast to the face. One thing about Reaper in this gameplay is he is the master of tank kills. In the game, he is definitely the best character at killing tanks. So say the enemy team is stacking tanks, then a good counter to that is just putting one Reaper on your team because Reaper can just go up to these tanks, empty his shotguns into the face and because of the massive spread on his shotguns pretty much all those bullets are going to be hitting the tanks anyway and dealing massive damage to tanks. You've seen it in this gameplay here, the Reinhardt whenever I get to him is just absolutely melting against my shotguns. Against tracers and things you definitely have to be a lot closer because the closer you are obviously the more bullets are that are going to hit from your super spread shotguns. The other neat little thing about Reaper is his passive ability where when he kills someone or gets an assist on a kill, that person that he killed will drop a health globe and it's only for Reaper. Only you can pick that up even if there's other Reapers on your team or Reapers on the enemy team, only you can pick up that health globe. It's only showing up on your screen as well so no one else can see these health globes and it'll restore some health for you which is great because Maybe when you go in for that assassination, you take a little bit of damage out of it and you can just wraith form up, pick up the health globe, get back to your team. What you can do with Reaper is play around the cooldown on your wraith form. That's what you want to do. You've got an 8 second cooldown on wraith form, play around it, uh, go in for those assassinations, make sure you've got wraith form up when you do, get back out and make sure you, you know the duration of wraith form. It's not super long, it's not super short, so you've got plenty of time to use it. You've got time to regroup with your team or find another little corner to duck around and wait for someone to come around hunting for you and then just blast them to pieces as well. Wraith form is definitely the best part of the Reaper kit. I think the other thing that's pretty neat about Reaper is he does have quite a bit of tankiness. He has 250 life so he's not one of the super squishy characters sitting at 150 life. He's not one of the other characters like Farah sitting at 200 life. He is one of the characters sitting a bit higher than that with 250 life. 
and the fact that every kill he gets he picks up health, he can wraith farm out and just avoid so much damage and he can teleport in so he doesn't have to take that initial sort of fire that's traded before team fights happen he doesn't need to take that damage because he's instantly getting onto the enemy's position so reapers can be scary in that sense as well when you're playing a fire it's going to take maybe a few rockets especially with splash damage rockets so it's going to take way too many splash damage rockets as a fire to take out an enemy reaper and you think yes Fara definitely does counter Reaper because there's no way a Reaper is going to kill a Fara who's flying above him in the skies. But the fact is that a lot of time, because you've got that Ray form there, the Fara is not going to be able to kill you anyway because you've got that time to go in, get back out, and you're fine. You can go into the closed roof areas. The only thing about Reaper, going by this last fight here, you can see it became a lot more tricky for my Reaper plays to work because there wasn't somewhere I could push actually behind the enemy team. I had a dead end on their spawn room and it was a sort of open area fight. There was that one side room with a health pack, which I used quite a lot to duck back in to regen, but it cost me a few lives at the end. So ideally, I probably would have switched a different character at that point in an actual match, just Reaper doesn't perform so well on those final fights, apart from when you get that big, massive, game-winning Death Blossom kill. But yeah, stage one video, so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to keep each gameplay playing that one character the whole way through, even although that's not what Overwatch is currently encouraging in gameplay right now. I'm just trying to make every character work for full matches, so at least I thought that was a pretty nice game with Reaper. Anyway guys, let me know what you thought. Sometimes I feel like I'm pretty tough on myself trying to trying to bring you guys the best gameplays. A lot of gameplays I just scrap is like, oh, I died within the first 30 seconds, can't upload that one. But that's always how I've done it anyway since like Crisis 2, Crisis 3, Titanfall. I've always, if I die in the first 30 seconds, nope, no gameplay for YouTube, so it's pretty hard sometimes. I'm obviously going to keep bringing them for you guys because they're a lot of fun to make. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And thanks for watching, guys. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.